This, these are grapes on the farm in uh, north, uh, northeast of Naples that my grandfather grew up in uh, on the Murata farm and two of my dad's first cousins are on the farm there. So visiting there, you know, the wine cellar is over 100 years old. It was the wine cellar that was there when my, when my grandfather was there. They make their own wine. So if you're there during wine pressing season, it's really fun to sort of see that process. And, and then you get to taste the wine. And then there's actually three brothers who have, who have um, three cousins who each have a house down there. And then, of course, you have to judge who made the best wine. <laughs> so there's just all these sort of little things. So connection to, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm half Italian and I'm half English. And on the Italian side, if you can draw a line between you and them, your family. It's kind of like Olive Garden. And, and on, the, on the British side, you shake hands with your parents. And so family is your immediate, your immediate family, you know, to the point where my uncle will say, um, my mother, instead of, on the Italian side, you'd say, your grandmother. You know, you connect the person with the person. On the British side, it's my mother, not your grandmother. You know, it's, it's just sort of, because grandparents aren't in the same family. <laughs> It's this big. So I always say that Italian is dominant <laughs> um, genetically only because family is, you know, I've got so many more Italian relatives than I have the, the British side. Even though this side, you can, you know, you can do the, 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 you know, the, the, uh, the genetic chart and you can see who they all are, but they're just not related to you. <clears throat> so so it, Italy happens to be sort of, you know, even, even, the grand, even my kids and, and, and their first cousins who are one quarter Italian, if you ask them what nationality they are, they say, well, we're Italian, of course. You know, last name Murata and Murata's dominant. So that's all that matters. Doesn't matter anything else. So, you know, I Italy and especially the farm it has, uh, has some, some places. Um, this is New Zealand. I've never been to New Zealand, but we have clients who've been to New Zealand and anyone who's been to New Zealand says heaven and New Zealand are roughly related. They, they, just, they think New Zealand is an incredible place and they think it's amazing and it's got everything in there and it's, and it's wonderful. So uh, how many people have been to New Zealand? Yeah, how many people would disagree with the statement that New Zealand is an incredible place? Yeah, no one disagrees. So, so New Zealand's amazing and so I, New Zealand is on my bucket list. I'd like to go there before I die. So that's one of my life goals is to see what heaven's going to be like <laughs> before I get there, you know. So, um, so for some people, New Zealand is a sacred place. For some people, it's snorkeling, you know, or, 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 or diving, being underwater. Um, Venice might be a place. You know, I, I went to, um, with my daughter on a, on a soccer uh, excursion. She's on a, she was on a travel soccer team. And we actually, one summer, raised money, and we went throughout Italy and Austria and Germany, and we went to Venice. And so Venice is, I've been to Venice a few times now, and it's just an amazing place. It fell out of favor in the Middle Ages, so it's a middle-aged town. It, it's, yes, there's a lot of, it's been built up a lot since then. There's a McDonald's on the, on the main plaza. So, you know, that's not quite the same, but a lot of the architecture and art is the same. For some people, it's New York City. You know, they consider themselves New Yorkers, and it's like New York is the place, and they, they have a connection to New York. So one, one of the things to think about is, are there places in the world that you'd like to see or you'd like to go back to see? I'm kind of the kind of person who likes to go back to a place I've been before just because it's familiar, and I love it. And I, you know, so, I, so for me, I, adding a new place means I have to put it in the rotation somewhere, and so it's less interesting. But, but new places can be fun, too. So maybe you're more of a new person or you want to go back to some places you've been. Uh, you know, just walking around Stanford campus, seeing, you know, places when I was young. I can say that now that I just turned 50 this year and joined the Senior Center this year. You know, I'm not, I'm not, not young anymore. I'm just spry for my age. Okay. Um, life planning question number three. So that last question was, was trying to get at what are your goals in life and then just do them. It, it's a hard principle. If you are like me, you are cut happy. And by cut happy, what, what I mean is you will keep doing what you're doing because you're happy at it. You're not, you're not miserable. You're not always changing places. A lot of people are cut happy. You will never change your career if you're cut happy, even if another career would be better. So for me, it was actually a difficult transition to go from teaching computer science to programming. Now, you'd think those are related, but they're not. They're very different. So I started out teaching computer science. Then I went to programming. The transition from programming to financial planning was odd. I'm still not over it. It's been 11 years, and I'm still not quite over that because I still think of myself as a geek and a programmer. 
What helps is the half-life of computer knowledge is five years, and I've been out of it 10, so I know about 25% of what I should know. And so I'm kind of lost somewhere in the 1990s in terms of my computer knowledge, and I have to get people around me who will help me out with, the, with, with all the latest stuff that's happened. So I, I tended to drop out about the time style sheets came in, so I don't really understand style sheets all that well. And I still, I still kind of you know, like to code in binary or something like that. It's just you know, all the latest tools and stuff are a little bit beyond me. So I, now I've surrounded myself with computer people who know the latest. And I still speak geek enough to talk to them, but I don't, I don't actually live geek. I just speak it. So I'm kind of like a, not, a native, not a native anymore. So life planning question number three, the first number two, you're cut happy, but, you, but try out the things that you really want to do. Number three is trying to get at regrets. And it goes something like this. Your doctor comes to you and says, you have 24 hours to live, you're going to die tomorrow. So it's a very, very harsh statement, but, but you're going to die tomorrow. What do you regret in life? What, what, what did you not get to do? What did you not do the way you wanted to do it? What's, what's wrong there? Where, 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 do you, where, where do you feel that? You're going to die tomorrow. All those things that you thought you had five to ten years, you don't have any time. They're gone. You missed them. What, what do you really regret? This is very deep. It's very emotional. And you know, I, you, sometimes you can kind of break into tears because you think to yourself, well, I'm not done with life. I don't want to die yet. You know? And that's what it's, intended, it's intended to have that emotional reaction is I'm not done with life because I haven't what? These fall into two categories things you regret doing and things you regret not having done. And it's a lot of it is, is you know, on both sides. Let me tell you, for people who really regret things they have done, um, I've noticed certain trends. Uh, two of the most common things people regret having done, uh, one, marrying the wrong person. Um, <laughs> And I, you know, I, just, I just say, you know, marrying the wrong person can really ruin your life. Being the wrong person in marriage can also ruin your life. But, but marrying the wrong person can, can, really, can really end up hurting because you hear so much melded with your life partner that if you can't figure out how to make that work or they're not willing to make it work or they have problems such that they can't make it work, um, it's very difficult. And it's probably the second most important decision you ever make in life. The second thing that gets regret, uh, regrets are for are getting involved in drug abuse. So drug abuse can ruin your life like nothing else. Um, my son's a, a film editor in L.A. He just graduated. He's looking for work. If any of you know anyone in L.A. who's hiring a film editor, please drop me an email. Because right now what he needs is connections. Because he needs someone to give him a chance. He's actually a very good film editor. A couple of years ago he won the Virginia uh, Film Festival short. Uh, so he's a very co competent and good film editor. He just needs sort of a chance to get started. But one of his summer jobs was um, editing film for people who got involved in substance abuse, and this particular nonprofit got them out. And he'd take an hour-long interview, and he'd boil it down to five minutes. And he said nothing convinced him. Uh, nothing would have been better to convince him that getting involved in drug abuse was not a good idea than to hear people's stories. So I mean, just story after story about how it ruined their lives and lives of everyone around them and then what it took for them to get out, which was usually some Herculean effort on someone's part, dragging them to rehab against their will, and then, and then they were able to get help. So drug abuse is another one. Uh, a third one, um, I can't remember. But at any rate, the, the regrets are usually, usually regrets for very specific things like that.